people in this video we want to look at clinical evaluation of ptosis so we have already uh, gone through what ptosis is and uh, we have also seen the types of ptosis congenital acquired etc so in this video we want to look at clinical evaluation of ptosis we want to look at first of all you will get the history onset whether it is congenital or acquired you will come to know by that then familial history if they had trauma because you have seen an acquired condition so many times the muscle trauma or the aponeurosis trauma right or eye surgery if there was an eye surgery the aponeurosis could have become weak and all that will uh, that history itself will tell you why it could have happened right so what is this image showing here severe ptosis moderate ptosis mild ptosis normal all this is showing okay so now uh, we are going to examination after taking history we will examine first you will exclude whether it is pseudo ptosis what is pseudo ptosis that means um, a simulated ptosis it looks like ptosis uh, why because of um, a small eye micro ophthalmos or thesis bulbi the blind eye that is uh, undergoing atrophy isn't it that's what is a thesis bulbi right or in ophthalmos what is in ophthalmos that is the eye is a little inset right so that could be in ophthalmos it look it is inside so maybe that is why you are thinking there is ptosis. So all these are pseudotosis. Actually the eyelid has no problem. That is what you should understand. Prosthesis it is actually an artificial eye. Brotosis that is because of the eyebrow is it. What is this brotosis? So the eyebrow is lower than normal. So it is a pseudotosis. Nothing wrong with the eyelid. Nothing long, wrong with the levator palpebrae superioris or the Muller's muscle. Dermato chalasis this we already saw right chalasis we saw one condition where the lid had lot of folds and all that this is the chalasis you can see how the eyelids are uh, you know having lot of creases folds so this is chalasis because of this there can it can appear like this too or this is this can also cause ptosis right that's what we read in the causes that it can be an acquired cause hypotropia what is hypotropia so the visual axis lower than the fellow fixing fixating eye one of them is down oh hypotropia tropia is a word that comes in squint isn't it so hypotropia okay 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 squint which where the eye is lower so it looks like the lid has problem this is hypotropia you can see how the eye is down so what's happening exactly why is that so that looks like ptosis is it but it is not ptosis so it will be pseudotosis then there is this is ipsilateral condition same side something is affected contralateral means eyelid retraction the other side eyelid is retract, retracted so you will feel like this side eyelid is down okay so that is makes sense right so there are two eyes okay the other side eyelid is actually retracted so you feel that this eyelid is down so that is contralateral condition high myopia so if there is high myopia on the other eye is it because they are saying it is always contralateral condition high myopia or proptosis so if the eye has propped out popped out proptosis then also you might feel like the other eye has ptosis so what they are saying here is this eye is proptosed so this eye which is normal it seems like this has ptosis but actually the problem is this one has proptosis okay something like that so all these conditions you have to rule out in uh, excluding pseudotosis you have to exclude these conditions and then once you know that it is actually ptosis then you have to measure it and all that there is some uh, classification here callahan beard classification of ptosis mild is less than 2 mm but 2 millimeter they said is normal right less than 2 millimeter mild moderate is 3 to 4 and greater than 4 is severe see basically you should understand if it is coming uh, uh, and touching this pupillary area that is when the vision starts get getting affected isn't it so uh, clinical evaluation now after examination and excluding pseudotosis now exactly to the tosis we have come where we will evaluate ptosis okay guys what are we looking at in this video evaluation of ptosis till now what we did we only took history and we excluded pseudotosis now we are actually coming to the point that it's ptosis we have to measure so here in this photo they are saying that you will measure the degree of ptosis in millimeters so here they are saying 
this is 2 millimeter and 2 millimeter that's what they are measuring okay so observe the following points whether the ptosis is unilateral or bilateral you should observe if it is uh, bilateral then you have to look at whether it is congenital or it is myasthenia gravis myotonic dystrophy kearns sire syndrome lambert eaton myasthenia myasthenic syndrome chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia so all these could be the bilateral conditions so these are the causes of bilateral so you first you have to find out whether it is bilateral or unilateral right so if it is bilateral it could be all these causes then you will check the function of the or orbicularis oculi muscle you will check the eyelid crease whether it is present or absent because eyelid uh, sometimes their crease can be not so clear if it is congenital that's what we saw there right jaw winking phenomena if it's present or not when they move the jaw whether the there is retraction of the totic lid if you remember all these words we have covered already in this congenital ptosis you saw this jaw if he moves the jaw the totic lid is retracted so all this you have to check orbicular oculi what it wants to do it wants to close the eyelids right that is what it tries to do so these orbicularis oculi is not what we are concerned the we are more concerned about what levator palpebrae superioris and the muller muscle which are supposed to be lifting the eyelid so that function if it is affected then only there will be ptosis but here they are checking the function of the orbicularis oculi muscle because that is keeping the eye shut isn't it it closes the eyelids this one closes but the ones that open are lps and muller then you will check if there is weakness of extraocular muscles like the rectus and all that is it bell's phenomena up and out rolling of the eyeball due to forceful closure what is this bell's phenomena up and out rolling of the eyeball due to forceful closure so this is they are saying is a defensive mechanism so when you try to forcefully close the eyelid it the eyeball will up go up and out roll so all this you have to check Okay, so after doing some more checks, now they are coming to the measurement. Till now they only spoke about bilateral and all that. Now they are saying unilateral, bilateral. You have to measure, measure something. Degree of ptosis, you will measure. Same photo they have put here. Ptosis is graded, mildest two millimeter ptosis, then moderate, then severe. Actually, if it is bilateral, right? You have to check by the measuring the amount of cornea covered. Because if it's unilateral, you can't compare with the other eye. But if it is bilateral, you'll have to compare with the, the amount of cornea that is covered. Is it going above your head? What are we looking at? Clinical evaluation of ptosis. In the last one, we looked at whether it's unilateral, bilateral, function of all the uh, orbicularis muscle, check the eyelid crease, jaw winking phenomenon, you check extraocular muscles, you check Bell's phenomenon, this up and out rolling uh, during forceful closure, all this you have to check okay then only they are actually coming to the measurement measurement is this next slide measurement they are going to measure and grade it as mild moderate or severe this itself this grading itself they are calling as callahan beard classification remember two three four mild is two moderate three severe greater than four something like that you can remember guys now we are coming to something else marginal reflex distance mrd mrd it refers to the distance between the upper eyelid margin and the corneal right light reflex. Okay, so this normal value should be around 4 to 5 millimeter. That means between the upper eyelid margin and the corneal right light reflex, you should have 4 to 5 millimeter. Look at this. If this is the lid margin, upper lid margin, this is the corneal reflex. The distance between these two should be 4 to 5 millimeter, isn't it? That is normal. But as you can see, as the ptosis goes on increasing, the distance between the lid margin and the corneal reflex are reducing. So this is marginal reflex distance. Marginal reflex distance. Margin and then reflex. The distance between these two. Okay. So that is another evaluation that you can do. Then you will check for the levator function. You have to assess the levator function. Don't worry people, just three more slides we have. Levator function you will assess. Then you will do some special investigations like tensilon test, then check for hornus, then check for um, neurological investigation, then you will take photographic records of the patient to maintain for comparison. That's it. That will complete clinical evaluation after the treatment will take up in next video. So we just have to look at three slides. Please bear. 
uh, clinic assessment of the levator function this they are doing by Burke's method what are they doing here <clears throat> determined by the lid excrusion caused by LPS muscle ask the patient to look down a thumb is placed firmly against the eyebrow right and you will block the action of the frontalis then the patient is asked to look up and the amount of lid excrusion is measured with a ruler okay levator function is graded as follows normal 15 millimeter good fair poor that means normal is 15 millimeter means what the patient is asked to look up the amount of lid excrusion is measured excrusion means what oh it's excursion just like how we went in our college short trip and all like that it's a trip short trip excursion so the short trip taken by this upper eyelid is measured with the ruler so normally it should move nicely right if it is down and it's going up it should normally move up nicely right 15 millimeter it can go up but if it doesn't uh, move much then it is not going on the uh, trip nicely so that is ptosis so this is the evaluation of the levator function levator is supposed to lift the eyelid so it is not lifting much that's why ptosis only two more slides to go special investigations tensilon test for myasthenia gravis if you suspect then you will give what intravenous injection of edrophonium tensilon it is called as and then the patient's myasthenia gravis will go off so this is tensilon test before after Horner syndrome what will you do Horner syndrome is what oculosympathetic paresis they are giving phenylephrine it seems but otherwise I thought there is cocaine test apraclonidine or something right anyways then you have neurological investigations to find out the cause for neurogenic ptosis you will find out which nerve is actually affected all the tests you can do last slide guys in clinical evaluation photographic record of the patient should be taken and maintained for comparison as simple as that so people in this video we started clinical evaluation of ptosis we have to take history we have to exclude pseudotosis we have to look at uh, the opur ob what is this orbicularis oculi muscle you have to check check the eyelid crease jaw winking phenomena check the extraocular muscle strength check for bell's phenomena okay all this you will check then you will measure the amount of ptosis and grade the ptosis then you will check the marginal margin margin reflex distance you will check mrt then you will assess the levator function how much it is able to go on a trip from down to up then you will do special investigations like tensilon test with edrophonium horner syndrome you will check then all the nerves you will check then you will take a photo or a graphic record of patient and maintain for comparison next video we will look at the treatment guys see you in the next video for ptosis treatment this is all we will look at in the next video bye bye